What's up everybody, Scott the Dog Dad here, and in this video, Kimberly Gautier from KeepTheTailWagging.com and I are going to talk about what 2017 has brought the raw feeding world community as a whole, and what we think 2018 is going to bring the raw feeding world. So stick around. <music> Okay, I think that we are now recording. What is up, everybody? Scott the Dog Dad here from DogDadOfficial.com and Kimberly Gautier from KeepTheTailWagging.com. And we are going to talk about something today that I think is super important for this time of year. I think that everybody talks about and thinks about this kind of stuff all the time. Not just raw feeding related, but, you know, it's the end of the year. You start reflecting back into the, you know, previous, your current year saying, okay, what happened? What was good about it? What wasn't so good about it? And what do I want to do? And what does the next year look like? So today, what we want to talk about is what did 2017 bring raw feeding? And what do we think 2018 is going to bring raw feeding? So hello, Kimberly. Hello, Scott. How are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great. And I just want to mention, since I just took a drink of coffee, and I know that we talked about it off the call, but I, I just think that it's hilarious that we both joined this call with a hot beverage and a dog-themed mug that's black and white. I, I just think yes, it's hilarious. Yes, I love my tea. <laughs> All right, so let's just dive right into it. I know that we both have a couple of things um, prepared, so we're just going to kind of do a back and forth here. If some of the things that I, if I say something like, all right, here's my current point and you wrote it down too, then just say, hey, I wrote it down too. And then we can both just dive into it. I'm sure we'll both comment on all the things we say anyways, but let's get started. So go ahead with your first thing, ladies first. Oh, so we're talking about things that were fantastic about this year. And I'm happy to go first because it pet fooled. Pet fooled. Pet fooled. <laughs> because it was released in January of 2017. Um, I know that you got a lot of new members to your group. I got a lot of new members to my group. Um, my traffic to my blog went up 50% after mm -hmm. Pet Fold came out. And I started getting emails from people who were like, I just watched this movie on Netflix and um, now I want to do better. And I think it reached so many people who really didn't know that um, there was an alternative to kibble or that there was anything wrong with kibble. And um, so, yeah, I'm so grateful to Cole Harrington and the people that he worked with to put that video together because um, it was something that was needed. And what I really love is that he's continued the conversation with his Talk To Me campaign. And he's been just basically going after so many brands and just, you know, shining the light on them and forcing them into transparency and showing, um, giving proof to people that, you know, hey, they don't always have our best interest at heart. They are a business and that is where their priority is going to be. So it's up to us to, as, you know, pet parents, pet owners, pet guardians to, to speak for our dogs and cats, not to expect these um, nameless, faceless brands to do it for us. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Totally forgot to turn that thing on silent. And we're doing it now. Yay for life, <laughs> Yay for life stuff. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, we're going to keep it PG, obviously, so that we can keep this stuff on YouTube. But Cole is an absolute bamf. I mean, he's just awesome. I think that my favorite thing, obviously, other than Pet Fold, because, yeah, what you were saying about traffic increase, holy cow. I mean, because at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of 2017, the Raw Feeding 101 group had 500 members in it. Mm -hmm. And now it's at 11,500 members. So yeah, that's a little, it's a significant increase in traffic and everything else. So it, that was definitely huge. But one of my favorite things about Cole is he's just so, dare I say, aggressive about transparency. Yes. yes. Uh, He's not afraid to call people out on social media and say, hey, I've been trying to get a hold of you about, you know, some transparency and answers about your raw feeding product for all these pet parents out there. What's up? Why aren't you getting back to me? <laughs> so I love that about Cole. And I think that he's going to keep doing that. And I, I hope, I really hope that there's some kind of, um, and I think that I heard wind of it, but I think that, I hope that there's some kind of, you know, pet fool two or something that's going to be coming out that goes into even more detail that's 
specific about certain brands and what their processes are and you know who can raw feeders trust who can not necessarily who can they not but more so who can they trust so yeah. I, I love cole absolutely awesome awesome guy coffee's important must pause for coffee <laughs> okay now i have my list totally written down here so i do not have them memorized so if you see me looking down that's exactly what i'm looking at but um it's kind of funny that you started with pet fold because the first thing that i wrote down was I think that one of the things 2017 brought us was a lot of great um, studies and overall resources, specifically mm -hmm. what I'm mostly thinking about right now. And this was at the tail end here of 2017, but the uh, pet cancer series. I think that that was absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that was on my list. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. I think that it was absolutely something that pet parents were not just wanting but needing because you know i can talk all day long literally all day long about helping you transition to raw feeding but i know very little to nothing about helping you treat cancer i just know nothing about it and i know that there's lots of people in lots of raw feeding groups and just all over the internet in general that had these questions and had these problems and the answers just weren't widely available. You know, there were people that were approaching me saying, Hey, my dog has cancer. I am looking to get switched over to raw feeding. And I was like, well, as much as I would love for you to purchase my course, I don't think that's what's going to serve you best right now. Go and talk to um, keto pets, go and watch the pet cancer series. I think that's going to do you more justice right now. So I think that just, the studies in general, the pet cancer series, all of that that came out is just giving us more validity, I guess you could say, as raw feeders that all these claims that we're making aren't just, I mean, I guess they were up until this point anecdotal, but there's actual substance there and the money's actually getting poured into studies and they're coming back with the results that we've been saying, see, this is what we're talking about. There's not tens of thousands of people doing this thing and they just all happen to have the same results. I don't know, it's just, ah, uh, drives me crazy. I know, so, yeah. and the, the thing about it is that, you know, we're basically standing on the shoulders of studies that were done for humans for years. Mm -hmm. You know, back when that documentary, um, Super Size Me came out and everyone would realize what eating a steady diet of processed fast food can do to you. Um, and you know, the changes that were made, you know, McDonald's got rid of their supersize menu, even though <laughs> the claim wasn't because of the documentary. But I think a lot of people's eyes were open to, wow, this is what I'm putting in my body. This is what I'm putting in my children's body. So even though it seems to be, it's, you know, a long time between then and now, um, it shouldn't have been a huge leap for us to say, if it's bad for us to eat processed food, you know, morning, noon, and night, it's got to be bad for our dogs who are smaller, who have a shorter lifespan, you know, and who basically depend on us for their health and nutrition. But um, it's, it's interesting because what I find is that because of Pet Fool, because of, you know, the Truth About Camp, Pet Cancer series, and because of influencers, I'm not having that pushback that I used to have, especially in the pet blogging community. People are now like, well, Kimberly is the one that knows about raw feeding. And when people talk to me, I'm no longer like, you know, trying to tiptoe around someone's feelings as I explain <laughs> that this prescription dog food is not better than raw feeding and why. People actually are interested in hearing um, what I have to say. Hi, Wolken. I know you want attention, but Kimberly has my attention right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, I just think that a lot of that comes to people just until they hear about things like raw feeding and the alternatives to kibble, to kibble, they just don't think about it. Like it's just that they've been rough, not raw feeding. They've been feeding kibble and hearing about, you know, quote unquote dog food for so long that it's just so standard and so normal that why question it? Yeah. But then as soon as that question gets posed in your head, you're like, well, duh. <laughs> Why wouldn't this have some kind of weird, you know, we hear again about carbs being so bad for people when we have excessive amounts of them, but you know, um, the video that Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney came out with showing the different carb levels and different, you know, kibbles, it's like, 
it's like 50% carbohydrates. How could, if we ate a diet of 50% carbohydrates, like I don't even want to think about it. I just don't. <laughs> so yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Um, the next point that I wanted to bring up, and this isn't as much of a fun topic, but I think it's a really important one, is I think that in 2017, partly because of, you know, just people opening their eyes, some people speaking up. Um, I know that uh, Karen and Rodney did a video, I think it was way early 2017, it may have even been the end of 2016, uh, just a video talking about raw feeding in general. And uh, I think that a big disillusionary light has been shown on the raw feeding community and world, and that is that we can be a really abrasive and judgmental community. We really, really can. And I think that even more importantly than that light being shown, we've realized that we need to stop doing that. Because if our, our overall goal, which I like to think that it is, if our overall goal is to get more pets switched over to some form of fresh food, you know, whether that is raw feeding, whether that's a home cooked diet, you know, whatever it is, if the goal is to get more pets switched over to fresh food, like, do you really want to go and join the club where everybody's fighting and calling each other names? I know that I don't. <laughs> so I think that that is something huge that has come from 2017 because I've been in raw feeding groups for eight years now and it's, I've never seen it talked about before until this year of like, holy cow, we like spend 50% of our time saying rude things to each other and complaining about this and that. And I think that that's one reason why my group and your group have blown up so much this year is because we just don't tolerate it. Yeah. Like, you can either play nice, like yeah. we're all taught in kindergarten, or you can, you can just go away because <laughs> There's plenty of people here. We're not desperate for member count or anything like that. I would rather lose 5,000 people that were negative mm -hmm. than keep you around for the sake of, of numbers. Yeah. And it's so completely true. And it's funny because um, I know that people have been nasty to each other for years. And this is, you know, in all groups. I mean, every person I talk to, you know, the rescue community, they talk about how vicious people can be you know, the parenting community, you know, people can be so judgmental and, and, you know, the fitness community, every community has like drama within it. And it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, because, you know, we're on um, social media, we, we forget that, you know, we don't have tone of voice. We don't have body language, you know, any tone that we're reading into um, some one's response or question or anything, unless they're out and out calling you a moron, the tone is coming from you and it's, it's basically you're having a bad day and now you're deflecting it into this conversation and then reacting. And I think that's, a, that's something that's very hard for a lot of people to get their head around. You know, you know, if I'm upset, then it must be because you did something. That's yeah. sort of our, you know, go-to place. And fault, not my fault. Exactly. And I completely get it because for years that was how I thought until I finally had to realize, huh, it's me, not them. And then I made a change. But yeah, it's, I think, you know, to piggyback on this, you know, one thing that 2017 brought me was a thicker skin. And granted, I, I don't like conflict. I don't like arguing with people. I don't like the idea that I might have offended or hurt someone's feelings. But on the flip side, I don't have time to, to coddle someone who wants to just be mad. Yeah. And, and I think that there is, there are people who, you know, we're having a conversation. I had a conversation with one of my followers when about the vegan things going on down in LA and I, she shared her thoughts and I shared my thoughts and she actually thought that I was arguing with her and she was like, well, I'm not trying to argue with you. And then she sent me this message and it was like really weird about, you know, I didn't mean to offend you and da 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 and I will never post on your wall again. And I was just like, what's going on? And so I was like, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. And then finally I was just like, she's like, well, I said something and then you said something back. And I was just like, yeah, because we were having a conversation. That doesn't mean we're arguing. It just means that we're sharing our thoughts on, on a topic. And, and it was just, you know, she was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I blew that out of proportion. And what's interesting is I've seen many of those type of conversations where someone, you sort of talk them off the ledge 
where they were like, oh crap, I really blew that out of proportion. And it's just like, yeah, but I've been there. I know what it feels like to do that and to go there. I just wish more people had the wherewithal to basically look at themselves and, and ask themselves, you know, am I really, you know, being attacked or am I just having a bad day and I should probably like go hug my dog or something? <laughs> because I think that if, if more people took a step back and did that, we would have less conflict. And I mean, I, it, it's so funny because when I mean, you and I do it all the time where we message each other about things that are happening and it is, it's kind of, I think part of my thick skin is having a friend that I can message with and go, oh my God, can you believe what just happened? And part of it is, you know, just being able to take a step back and realize that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, which is something that you always say, it's like, this isn't serving me. Yeah. This isn't getting people to change their mind about Kipple. This isn't going to increase, you know, views on my blog. This isn't going to increase sales of my book. This is not a conversation that I need to spend a lot of time and energy in. So I'm going to quietly walk away from this and go and do something else. And I think yeah. as a community, one, we need to be a little more um, kind and empathetic towards each other, a little more patient, and you know, allow ourselves to say, you know what, I'm in a bad mood. I don't wanna be on Facebook today. I'm gonna go do something else. Because <laughs> I know it feels like, especially when you're an admin to a group, it feels like you have to be on Facebook most of the day. You don't, you yeah. really don't. Yeah. And that, that all really, you know, the whole, does it, does it serve me and does it deserve me type thing? It's like, it's not just for people in a position like us where we are admins and, you know, we do have raw feeding products and all these other things. It, it also can be taken back to, um, you know, our followers and the people in our group where it all comes back to time and does it deserve your time, you know, is getting in this silly argument in the raw feeding group going to help you get more educated and be a better pet parent if the answer is no then why you know just don't bother all that you're doing is satisfying your need to argue it's really what you're doing you'd be much better served going and reading another book going and watching another video you know you know even just going to a different post it's does the conversation deserve your time and is it educating you more and letting you be a better pet parent and really you know all of this this whole time thing the serve you deserve you thing um it just comes back to you can't please everybody you can't I don't ca care how hard you try how much time you put into it how many if ands or buts are attached to it you're not going to please everybody and someone is going to disagree with you and someone's not going to like what you have to say and you just need to be okay with that. Yeah. It's, it's unavoidable. I could talk forever about that one, but then we go <laughs> on a huge tangent. <laughs> All right. What is, what's the next thing that you have written down? I think. Um, I'm, well, actually I have a list of books that people recommended to me over the years and I finally got them. So um, Canine Kitchen, which is a, by Monica, is it Seagull or Se I always want to say Seagull because of, you know, <laughs> action star, but um, this is an old version of the book, but it's still really fantastic. You know, Unlocking the Canine Ancestral Diet by Steve Brown and then the new one by Judy Morgan, the yin yang of nutrition. And I got all these books and I actually started going through them to write a blog post that I have live today. And what's fascinating about them, and it made me think of the fact that we do not have like a really formal um, training on how to learn about dog nutrition. So about, you know, essential fatty acids and amino acids and then, you know, what the base, you know, vitamins and nutrients they need and where they can get those from. All of that type of stuff is stuff that we're all asking each other and um, reading books and, one thing I found about these books is that a lot of the questions I see in raw feeding groups who, where people ask, is there some place where I can find a list of exactly what my dogs need to eat in their diet as far as vitamins and nutrients, that stuff is in these books. And these books go over special diets, like if you're trying to combat a certain things, the things that you can do. And granted, it may not be written in a manner in which everyone can absorb because we all learn differently. I love them. And, you know, they're going to be books that I highlight and flip through and reference for a long time to come. And so I think that we're reaching a point where we're really getting some 
not only quality information out there, but um, we can appreciate and know where to go to look. And that's what I love about, you know, my growing library of books. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I like, it's funny that you brought that point up because my next point was realizing in 2017, just as a, as me as an individual, as, you know, a raw feeding community as a whole, the world in general, how little we really still know and how much there is still left to yeah. discover. Because, I mean, it seems like every couple of days there's a new article or a new video or something that's coming out with a new piece of information. You know, like earlier this year, the whole, okay, now we need to balance fats conversation <laughs> happening and everybody getting turned upside down and having a freak out. And that there's just so much for us still to learn. And I really hope that as we go into 2018 and 2019 and 2020 and everything else that we can take that information that's in those books. And I don't know what the best word here is, but compact them or change them or morph them in some way where it is more digestible. I, yeah. the, I think the, the ideal, you know, obviously the magic button, but I think that the ideal would be some way for us to be able to, okay, here's exactly what you need to do to feed your dog, you know, the best possible diet. Here's this checklist and you're done. Boom. You know, the recipe, the checklist, the what do I need to shop for type of thing that everybody's asking for all the time. That's actually going to let us do it on an individual level. That's going to somehow, identify those things that the individuals need. And I know that that's a far reach and we're probably, you know, far off from that. I hope that we're not, but I think that if we can keep asking these questions, if we can keep diving into these books, if we can keep repurposing this information and just, you know, having more studies done that we will eventually get to a point where we go, okay, here's this company that's now providing this home test where you can at home find out what it is that's deficient in your specific diet. You can add this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and you are good to go. And you can have a monthly subscription or something like that where you get sent a test or a, you know, quarterly subscription and you check all these different levels at home. And, you know, of course, no offense to the vets. We love you, but you know, we don't have to go and spend a thousand, two thousand $2,000, you know, every now and then to go and have this test done and that test done, something that individual pet parents can do at home. So I think that there's just so much more information out there for us to discover that we're going to be yeah. able to utilize. Absolutely. All right. I think that unless you've got another one, I'm now going to move into what I think is coming in 2018. Okay. Do you have any other 2017 points to make? Yeah, I have one more. One thing that I've noticed this year is um, I've had a growing appreciation for the people who are the, and you know what I'm talking about in the raw breeding groups. I have been feeding raw for 15 years. You know, they start every post or every response with, I've been feeding raw for 25 years. And, you know, and I used to be resentful of those people because it was just sort of like, oh, bully for you. <laughs> you know, golly, it doesn't make you an expert in my dogs. Cause, and I would, I would just get so frustrated. And only because when I first started feeding Ron, first joined the groups, those were the people that would try to bully me into doing things their way. Right. And after years later, I don't see it as bullying anymore. I see it as they have a wealth of information and they're just sharing it for free. And, um, you know, I'm noticing that people are getting less overwhelmed with this and more appreciative of those people because it, it is one of those things where yeah people who are the you know the know-it-alls in the group you know it can be um frustrating when you're frustrated to have someone telling you what to do telling you that you're doing something wrong or tell you know and it and you know you're bringing that frustration into the discussion however i've learned to seek those people out when i have questions only because you know it's sort of like as a reminder, these people started when there was no raw feeding, when there was only like maybe a book. And, um, you know, there's, there's people who are just going to a butcher or hunting for themselves. I knew someone that was getting roadkill and, you know, and feeding their dogs. And so they are going from that time period to today when we have raw that's readily available to us. So they have such a wealth of information 
And they're also a really great reminder to us when we're freaking out about our dogs not getting enough vitamins and nutrients. <laughs> that, yeah, these people were feeding, like my girlfriend, she's been feeding raw for over 10 years. And um, the first, I think, eight years, she just fed chicken. And, yeah. you know, and she didn't feed vegetables. She, I don't even think she fed really many offal or organs or anything. She just fed chicken. And her dogs were fine. And it's not that she would re recommend that or I would recommend that, but it's just a reminder that dogs survived. They did good. So it's like whenever I see someone freaking out because they're not sure if they can get their diet balanced or if I'm tempted to freak out because of new information that comes out, those are the people that I now turn to to say, do I really need to balance fats? <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on this? I think that that a lot has come from a change in how people communicate, look at, perceive all those different things, raw feeding as a whole. Because I know that when I started, um, you know, I researched for a year before I actually started. And I know that for the longest time, up until again, like the last year, it's been presented as this, everybody knew exactly what they were doing. There were these one or two ways to do it and you follow A, B, and C no matter what. And that's exactly how you do it. No questions, like period. Mm -hmm. And so it was presented as this really cut and dry, super duper simple. And I'm not saying that it needs to be overly complicated, but people made it seem like it was reading the instructions manual on how to set up your TV, yeah. which, which it's not. So I think that now that we have more studies coming out, now that we have more, you know, influencers talking about this and that, I think that people are taking it as something that is something that is worth the time of actually looking into and asking these long, you know, long winded answer type questions and getting those long winded answer type answers because it's not just a, okay, here's your perfect recipe book and you're done follow a, B and C it's okay here's your general steps and here's these hundred different directions that this one different step could go <laughs> and you need to identify, you know, again, I don't mean, I don't mean to make it sound overly complicated, but there's a reason why at the, I try to go into as much detail as I can in the course without making it ridiculously long, which it already kind of is. But there's a reason why at the end, the last thing that I ask you to do is, keep learning because I, I can't tell you everything. I, I can't, I can't know your dog. Kimberly can't know your dog. Rodney and Karen can't know your dog. We can tell you as much as we want to, but I think that this positive change of at, you know, being able to accept those long winded answers from the super experienced people again, has come from a realization that there's a whole lot of information on this topic and yeah. it's not an instruction manual. And there's going to be a lot of questions to be yeah. answered. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so 20, 2018, um, what I think, first of all, that is going to happen in 2018 is kind of a continuation of what's been happening with 2017. And it kind of um, correlates to the first point that I brought up about 2017. And I think that we are going to continue to see more studies coming out. I know that I think yesterday it was on Instagram. I saw Rodney had posted like his little cartoon drawing of his, you know, flight path or whatever, somewhere over in Europe to go and look at more studies. Mm -hmm. I think that overall, without going off on too much of a tangent, we're going to see more studies come out that are going to prove these anecdotal beliefs that, you know, depending on how you look at it, we've been screaming for the last five, 10, 15 20 years and people have just been, you know, shunning it and pushing it away and being like, Oh, that's just anecdotal. And there's no, there's no proof. And it's, well, here's your proof. Here you go. Here's this big study. Now you can go and look at it. It was done for a year and it was done with this many dogs. And I mean, I think that we're going to see a lot more of that, which is going to, I think, bring another huge wave of people coming over to fresh food because as much anecdotal evidence and as much success story, this and that, that we can bring to people, I think that people just want to know answers. You know, there's so much skepticism in the world about everything right now that unless you can, sh you can show somebody, okay, here's your proof. There's just yeah. people that just will never do it. They'll never transition. They'll never look into fresh food because there's not some, 
you know, quote unquote, big scientific study that proved it. So yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more of that in 2018 because A, people are asking for it, but B, as far as, you know, funding the studies go, there are more and more companies that are seeing the financial gain to be made in having these studies done and then being able to provide, you know, raw, fresh food type products to people that are going to help them. And, you know, that's everything from training, but mostly um, suppliers. Because the more demand there is, the more supply that there needs to be, and all those different things. So if those studies come out proving A, B, and C, then there's that much more demand and that much more supply to be met. So I think there's more studies coming. What do you think? I agree. I think that um, I think <clears throat> what we're going to see is we're going to see more people um, basically just coming forward and being leaders in the community. I think we're going to see more people sharing. I. It's funny because in 2017, I met so many people and sort of like our rock little click group just doubled and tripled, you know, with the two crazy cat ladies and, you know, Krista, a vibrant canine. And, you know, there's pet store owners around the country. You know, Gregory has his new store. You know, we're, we're seeing all of these people building this huge platform with all of us talking and sharing. People are... Um, it's making it easier. People are a little more open-minded and a little more, um, I guess, primed for all of that information to start coming towards them. And um, yeah, Rodney and Karen are on their way to Italy That's and they're right. going to make three stops in Italy. And it's funny because they, they keep going to these countries where we're talking about in our country, no one has the money to put up a study. And they keep, we keep saying that over and over again, but in all these year, you know, there's Finland, there's all these countries in Europe where they've been doing studies for years and they're wrapping them up now. And it's just like, oh, and so, yeah, I think that we're going to see, you know, I think it was Finland that has a study that's showing that humans don't get sick when they feed their dogs the raw diet. You know, <laughs> we're seeing the benefits of raw for pets or fresh food for prep pets. And, you know, and I also think that we're, as this information grows, it was something that Emma said on Facebook a few weeks, several weeks ago, where it was, um, I think we're going to see a morphing of the term from raw feeding to fresh food because it's all more encompassing. And so it's like what you said earlier, where it's going to cover raw feeding, home cooked, um, um, even just adding fresh food to your dog's, you know, commercial diet, but we're going, it's going to be a little more all encompassing. And because of that wider net, we're going to capture the attention of, you know, just basically tens of thousands of more pet owners who are going to be like, oh, so I can do this. Whereas, you know, maybe in 2016, what I would hear from people would be, well, I don't feed raw as if, you know, I can't do this because I don't feed raw. And I think, you know, Karen and Rodney started the conversation of adding fresh food to a kibble diet. And now we're at a point where, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be, we're going to not have so many people that are like, nope, raw is it. That is the only thing you can do. And, you know, if you're cooking for your dog, then you're just may as well be feeding kibble. I mean, we're not going to have any of that. We're going to have more of a, you know, hey, I feed raw. I can help you with this. Dr. Judy Morgan is, can, can help you with cooked. You know, the two crazy cat ladies can help you with raw feeding for cats. You know, we're going to have all these different people and all these, this, I don't know, virtual resource library of information for all of the people that I think are going to be stampeding our groups and websites to get that information. Yeah. And it's such, it's such a beautiful thing because, um, the, I'm actually just writing down another point that you <laughs> made me think of. <laughs> um, it, it's such a beautiful thing because yeah, we have, you have your books, well, book, book, soon to be books. Book. <laughs> There you go. I've got mine right here. <laughs> but it's, it really is within arm's reach. It's right there. Um, you know, you have your book. I have my cores. We have all, all, there's all kinds of other people that have these other products that are solely based on, Hey, here's raw feeding, you know, as you know, total raw feeding. But I think that the beautiful thing about this is that more people are going to stop being like you were saying in 2016, it's all or nothing. You either have to feed all kibble or you have to go completely raw and ditch it all right now. And it's just not true. It like, it's just not true. And I think that 
with people being able to take those baby steps and saying, okay, well, maybe I'm going to start adding muscles or maybe I'm mm -hmm. going to start adding, you know, some type of omega-3 supplement, you know, small steps like that. Once they do those small steps, they're going to go, well, that wasn't so hard. So what's the next thing? And then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then they do end up doing a completely home cooked or a completely raw diet. So I think that it's a much more welcoming, you know, ecosystem, if you will, as opposed to, our way or the highway, it's all or nothing. And if you're not going to do it all, then go away because we don't want you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my next point was going to be that with all this, you know, all these studies coming out, all these changes that are happening in the community as a whole, people being more welcoming, people saying it doesn't have to be our way or the highway, all those different things. One of the, and more people graduating, is going to be more raw feeding accepting veterinarians. I think that with studies coming out like um, the pet cancer series where you know free versions are being given away to veterinarians, which was just an amazing idea, amazing idea, with more veterinarians graduating every year, having seen this stuff for the last couple of years while they're going through school, I think that we're gonna have more raw feeding accepting veterinarians in 2018. I had um, in one of my <clears throat> live Q&As, actually, I had somebody that's in veterinary school right now saying, I totally believe in this, you know, this is paraphrasing, but I totally believe in this raw feeding thing. I do it myself. I want to, um, you know, I want to preach this to my clients when I graduate, but mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to catch a lot of flack for it while I'm in school. And I think that it's just so amazing that there are kids and people out there that are doing that because it's true. Like it's going to be a rough road for them. But I think that when they do graduate after having all these years of all these new studies and new information and new non anecdotal anecdotal proof coming out, there's going to be so much, so many more of them for people to go to because I know right now, like it's almost impossible in some places to find a vet that accepts raw. I mean, up until even the last time that we went to the vet, there was always something that was said, you know, there wasn't a big conversation every time, but it was always like a, Oh, we feed raw and the vet tech or the vet going, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think we have more raw feeding accepting and fresh food as a whole, accepting veterinarians coming in 2018. Yeah. And I think one thing that I believe is going to come in 2018 is forced transparency. Because um, in 2017, a friend of mine sent me a link to a blog post in which it was a sponsored post. So the brand paid the blogger to write about them. And right. it was through an organization, a pet blogging organization, where I, since I was a member in the past, I know that they give them talking points of what they want them to list in the blog post. And one of the things that the brand, and it was a kibble brand that had freeze dried meat in the kibble. Um, they wanted them to, their food to be called a raw food diet and that this was raw feeding. And, um, as I shake my head in frustration. Yes. Yeah. And I, um, I left a comment, you know, disagreeing with the fact that that was raw dog food and, um, you know, it didn't go well, <laughs> and, um, as you can imagine. And, um, but, you know, I think that we're going to see more of that where these brands are using their marketing dollars to lie. And, you know, and it used to be, you know, a couple of years ago, I would be like, well, they're just, you know, they're misleading. No, let's just call it what it is. They are lying to the public about what the nature of their food and they're doing it because Many people, you know, this was me seven years ago, don't know the difference, don't know to ask these questions. Yep. And unfortunately, we have a pet blogging community and just a plain blogging community that either the, they don't know the difference, so they don't know to say, hey, this isn't quite right, or they just don't care because they're getting paid. And so they're just doing a job. And yep. I think that, you know, you know, starting with um, Cole Harrington with Petfold and also, I'm no, I'm starting to see a lot of more a lot more blog posts with um, by Dr. Karen Becker where she's pointing out marketing tricks, and I think we're going to start seeing more of that where people are, you know, I'm seeing people go to the store and take pictures of pet food 
and pointing out the lies. <laughs> and I think that these are, or, you know, like when I had, um, I can't remember the name, they make liver treats. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the brand, but you know, their publicist wanted me to take down a blog post that I wrote about them, you know, pointing out that they say they have no fillers, but they have dried bakery products as an ingredient. And it's like, that's not a filler, you know? And it's like, but you know, and it's just like those type of things where, you know, and you know, the PFI who wanted to do a, an, you know, I was going to do a YouTube video with them, but I told them no, because <laughs> you know, you did another interview with CRISPR of the groomer next door in which you told us that pet parents shouldn't look at their ingredients. And, you know, and one of your clients wanted me to take down a blog post because they didn't like what I wrote about their food. And it's just sort of like, you know, I think they're going to start seeing that pet parents are a lot more savvy, a lot more curious and are, you know, it's like, if we're going to be spending all this money, we want some answers. And if you're not going to give it to us, guess what? There's an, a growing community of people who are going to post it all over social media. So I think a lot of these brands are going to be forced into true transparency and either they're going to have to change the way they do things or they're going to have to go away. Yeah. The new age and social media and everything has turned everyone's life unless you really, you know, really lock down your privacy settings, you <laughs> basically turned everyone's life into an open book. And when those types of things aren't available, people start asking questions. And I think that that's a really, really good thing because I don't know what rock that these marketers that work for these pet food companies are living under, but guess what? It's 2017, almost 2018, and people ask questions and demand transparency. So if, and if you try to not be, or you try to lie, someone is going to catch you. Like, I don't care how good of a job you think that you do, yes. someone is going to catch you. I mean, there are people that go as far as getting employed with a company just so that they can get the inside info and then blow it up and throw it out onto the internet. So really, you know, this is speaking to the pet food companies out there. You can either change and start providing transparency and just being who you are or getting better, or you're going to get called out. Like it's yeah. just, that's all there is to it. You are going to be found out. It doesn't matter, you know, what complete and balanced or 100% fresh or whatever, you know, marketing sticker that you decide to put on to your, to your products, it's going to come out. You have to be transparent because it's 2017. People demand it at this yeah. point. I mean, look at what happened with um, Apple recently with their whole slowing down phones and this and that it's everything is all right well this thing happened and now we want all the answers and all the information because if you don't give it to us we know that you're hiding something from yes us. and you're a liar <laughs> and we're gonna tell everybody i mean it's just and it's and it is it's one of those things where you're all of these organizations are earning a revenue off of this and you know that goes to from the you know, and I was guilty of this in the past too, where I accepted money. I didn't do enough homework into a brand. And I think the first time I realized how dangerous that could be was when I did a review of a raw dog food brand, which is no longer in business <sighs> and pointed out, you know, that, you know, the ingredients on their website was wrong and, you know, and, you know, just different things where it just didn't make sense. And then I did the math on how much it would cost to feed one of my dogs. And it was you know, close to $2,000 a month. And yeah, and it was, or no, I think it was for all four of my dogs, it was going to be over $2,000 a month. And then, you know, for one, it was going to be over $500 a month. And Ridiculous. when I look, and I'm looking at this like, oh my God, this is terrible. So I went and found the other bloggers who wrote about this brand too. No one talked about the ingredients. No one talked about how much it cost. Everyone was just like, oh, it smells good and my dog likes it and now I'm a raw feeder. And, and it's just like, no, we owe it to our readers to give them something because it, you know, people don't trust anymore, but they entrust, you know, the influencers and they entrust the people who are, you know, have a following on social media. And once they lose trust in us, then, you know, we, we won't get it back because no. it's, you know, we have to, we owe it to them to tell them if we're, if I'm a dog lover and I love my dog so much, I cannot accept a check 
and promote something that I would never ever feed to my dogs. Yeah, that the, really that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, right? You know, is where is your moral compass at? Because whether you're a dog food brand, whether you're an influencer like Mira Kimberly, it's like you know, um, where does your moral compass point? Because at the end of the day, all of this stuff is about the pets. You know, a good friend from years and years ago when I put out the app that's long since obsolete. Um, when I put that out, a good friend said that it's all about the pets, you know, and that's really, really true. So if you are able to somehow sleep at night and <laughs> take money knowing that what you are saying isn't the truth and is ultimately hurting pets or, you know, at the very least not providing the benefits that you're claiming, then your moral compass is pointing in the wrong direction. And for me, when it comes to, you know, okay, I'm going to make this video or I'm going to say this thing on a live Q and a it's, is that true? And do I know that it's true? Because if I say it, somebody is going to think and accept mm -hmm. that it's true and they're going to go and act on that. Mm -hmm. So if I tell them something, I need to know that that is true or at least currently know that that's true, you know, cause new things get found out all the time. Yeah. And, know that I'm trying to do the best for that pet because I know that, and I know that you're the same. I do not want to get an email from somebody at some point saying, you told me this thing yeah. and this awful thing happened. Yeah. Maybe I don't have legal liability or something like that, but I don't want it on my conscience. I just yeah. don't. So, you know, where, where does your moral compass point is really where all this boils down to. And if you're willing to accept the and, money, you know, my worry for a lot of things, which people don't, Ooh, my internet connection is unstable. <laughs> but one of the things that um, it bothers me that people haven't picked up on is the fact that while we're talking, someone is Googling. And, and it's just like, so it's just like when I, when I listen, I listen to a lot of podcasts and one common um, theme of all the podcasts I listen to is if I get this wrong, I'm going to get 50,000 tweets or 50,000 Facebook messages or something like that because I did this wrong and people are going to correct me. Yeah. So I don't mind being corrected. I love learning new things, but I don't want to lose everything I've been working hard for for the past six years. For because, a blog post. Yeah, because, exactly. Because I decided that I wanted to check more than I wanted to tell the truth about a product. Yep. So, I mean, it means that, you know, it takes, I don't make as much money <clears throat> as I would if I were to s pr promote a ton of different brands, but I'm okay with that because, you know, I know that, you know, I can stand behind everything that I do promote and, you know, there's just something to be said for that. Yeah. The money, the, as somebody that's in the raw feeding space and the pet space, all those kinds of things, the money will come. But it won't come if you are willing to compromise and sacrifice the well-being of your followers' pets for profit. It's, you know, maybe it'll be a short-term solution if somebody's willing to do that. Maybe you'll get away with it for six months, a year or something. But it will come out. You will be found out. You will get called out. Cole will come and find you. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then it'll be over. And then you'll, just like you said, once you lose the trust, it's yeah. gone. It's gone. Which is why so many of these pet food companies are having, they're having such huge profit losses yeah. because they're being found out. They're being called out and like, you told us this and this isn't true. Yeah. Especially when we find out that that's not true and you keep telling us that it is. <laughs> uh, pet food companies. <laughs> I actually had a um, student recently that ha was having some trouble with the transition. And so we were having some back and forth discussions about it. And she's like, okay, well, I recommended like, if I were you, because that's how I like to teach people because I don't know your dog. So yeah. all I can do is say, here's the basic information. If I were you in your situation, I would do this. And it got to a point where I was like, okay, if I were you, I would go to the vet just to make sure that something else isn't happening. Mm -hmm. Turns out, that they were going to a, you know, and I wasn't surprised at all when I found out that they were going to a veterinary and a Banfield veterinary. Uh. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, 
okay, because she'd been telling me these things that the vet was saying, and I was going, okay, well, this all makes a whole lot more sense. Just go and point out, just go and Google that and see that the first 16 results are all articles and blog posts from them saying, here's why raw feeding is bad and why it's dangerous and why you shouldn't do it. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, they just drive me crazy. It just, I don't know why I had to bring up that point I just did because it was just so, uh, pet food companies. I, th I honestly do. And I think that you know, that's the other thing is like with Mars buying up veterinarian hospitals, you know, maybe three years ago, that would have been like, oh, well, you know, one stop shopping. I think there was a time when, when PetSmart had vet clinics and doggy daycares and all, you know, of course they have the grooming and they have the training and it's like one stop shopping. I can just go to this one place and get everything I need for my dogs. And then, you know, dogs ears started getting snipped off and they started, you know, um, what's it called? Discriminating against bully breeds. And, you know, but it's just one of those things where I think we as a community are starting to understand that one, whenever a company tries to do everything, they ultimately fail because they take on too much. Yep. I mean, you can't, you get too big and you just can't cover everything. You can't give good customer service. You can't stay up to date on everything. It seems like you should because you're, you have all this money coming in, but it always falls apart. It's better to niche down and be really good at this one thing than try and be good at everything. But the other thing is that again, you know, with s smartphones and social media, I mean, I have been at the vet Googling a vaccination to understand and asking questions. And, and I think a lot more people are gonna be doing those type of things and asking about titers and, and um, asking why are you giving the same amount of a vaccination to a 10 pound dog that you would give to a 110 pound dog? That doesn't make sense to me. And these people are gonna have to answer those questions. And um, I think, I honestly think that we're gonna see a growth in small local pet stores because they're going to be able to help us and answer the questions versus the big box chain stores. We're gonna see a growth in the small local veterinarian clinics rather than the big chain veterinarian clinics. And as you said earlier, with this new batch of students coming into the field who are being exposed through social media to raw feeding, raw feeders, fresh food, and all of these things, and answer, ask, you know, asking questions and seeing all of us and what we're experiencing, and they're not so you know, married, to the brands that are paying partly for this education, you know, um, I think that we're going to see them setting up shop and I think it's going to become a lot easier. I also, you know, I noticed, you know, over the past couple of years, you know, veterinarians who offer um, Skype consultations wow. so that if you can't have, if you don't have a veterinarian in your community that can help you with raw, you can get one through Skype. And I think we're going to see a lot more of just our community, you know, recognizing that, Hey, we're this small community, but we're about to blow up and we need to be prepared for that. And I think when that happens, we're not gonna have time. I, mean, I think we're always gonna have drama, but we're just really not gonna have time for it. And I think those of us who really want to make a difference are gonna leave that behind. And the people who want to, st to stay mixed up in the drama, they're gonna be left behind as well because no one's gonna wanna have time for it. When my dog is sick, I don't wanna argue with you about vegetables. I wanna know what I can do to help my dog. So it's just like, you know, I think that we're going to see, you know, I, I see it with the friendships I've developed over the past year. I think we're going to see a lot more support. I think we're going to see just a tighter knit community. It's going to be very separate from the kibble community, mm -hmm. but I think it's going to be solid and growing. And I'm, I'm really excited about this year or this upcoming year. I am. I am too. And on that point, I don't know if Zoom is going to start yelling at us in a minute because we will probably yeah. be going over an hour, but I do want to make one last point and you like pointed it out yeah. perfectly there with the, you can't, you actually brought it up a couple of times, which is great. You know, you can't specialize in everything. Like you just can't. And the fact that we're going to have such a much tighter community next year than we did this year and <clears throat> even more so than the year before and the year before, et cetera. I think that we are going to have this big, huge they'll lift it off this misconception of competition when it comes to people that are in raw feeding, because I mean, you can't like, yes. I, I can't give you the same thing that Kimberly can give you. I can't. So Kimberly, true. Kimberly can't give you what I'm giving you. I mean, so true. there's, I mean, ever, there's so many people out there. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and it, uh, it just hit the nail on the head that, 
because I don't know if you get these questions, but I get these questions. I have people messaging me, asking me, why do you um, let people make posts in your group about the Perfectly Awesome website? Why do you yes. <laughs> not, like, why do you constantly recommend Kimberly's book? Why, like, when you have this raw feeding course, why are you letting all these other, you know, not advertisements, but all these other recommendations be put into your group? And I'm like, because I can't help everybody. Like, I can't, no matter how much, I just can't help everybody, no matter how much I wanted to, no matter how much time I devoted to it, I can't help everybody and I can't give you what other people are going to be able to give you. This, their, speci their specialties, you know, like I could spend the next six months spending every hour of every waking day researching feeding uh, cats raw and I still wouldn't be able to give you what the two crazy cat ladies can give you. I can't, yeah. like there's just no way. So I think that there's going to be a big veil lifted off this whole, well, who is the one in true guru? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because there isn't one. There isn't one. It reminds me of, um, I'm a huge Sex and the City fan. And, uh, <laughs> and there is an episode where um, one of Carrie's friends was telling her about his therapist. He had three therapists and, you know, he had his tough love therapist and his you know, <laughs> therapist that he just went because he was cute and, and then, you know, his regular therapist. And that's how I look at all of us who are, you know, providing content information. We provide something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're my person that I go to for, you know, the prey model, whole type raw, um, you know, um, fasting information, those type of things, because you do things very similar to the way I do things, but exact opposite too. <laughs> so I learned so much from you because it's like, well, he's doing that. It's sort of like peeking over at your homework on your desk. Like, <laughs> okay. So it's working for him. So maybe I'll, you know, because of you, I started feeding my dog's duck frames instead of chopping them up and grinding them. And they loved it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do that from now on. You know, Ronnie from Perfectly Awesome, I consider her my, my tough love person <laughs> because Ronnie will tell it like it is. I mean, it can be hard to take and she can be pretty um, tough at times. It's like, if you're not in a mood for her advice, I say, don't ask for it because she's going to give it to you and she's not going to sugarcoat it or, you know, cuddle you up in a warm blanket and give you nice advice. She's going to just tell you. And it's not in a mean way. It's just that she just, that's what she, that's how she delivers it. Take but it, you know it, what? It, here it is. Yeah. And I, and I have learned so much from her and I have taken advantage of her offers to help me with things because I knew that instead of it taking a week for me to learn something from her, she was going to deliver information in 30 minutes and I was going to be able to go run with it. And I love that about her. And then, you know, there's so many other people in our community that just give us what we need in the way that we need it. And that's why we can't expect you know, I am not everything to everyone. I mean, you can look at the reviews of my book where I have these three star reviews where one person said, well, if it didn't convince me to feed raw, okay, <laughs> maybe that person should go talk to Ronnie or go talk to Scott because it's like I was, you know, and one person said, you know, she repeated stuff too much and it made her book unnecessarily long. And it's just sort of like, well, you know, yeah, because people read books differently and sometimes a topic comes up and you have to repeat certain things and you know, but I into one another. Exactly. And but th again, that means that my, my method of delivering information wasn't for that person and it's okay. Thank you for giving me three stars anyway. Yep. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. And so, yeah, we've, you and I have had this conversation where competition is a myth. It's, you know, an illusion that, yeah, it may feel like we're competing, but there are billions of people on this planet. And thanks to the internet, we have access to so many people and people love their animals. There's no reason why I can't promote my book in one post and promote Scott's course in another post. And I do it because I get emails daily too. And people, how do I get started? And I actually think that, um, yeah, you can read my book, but I think Scott's course will be easier for you because then you can just go through and read it. And then after you do that, you can read my book. But I think that that's a better fit for some people. Whereas some people, if they want a book, I will recommend my book, but I'll recommend, you know, all of these as well. <laughs> and so yeah. it's just, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I think that when we start treating it as competition, we lose track of the people 
that we're helping because we're too busy fighting with each other. The real but, goal, the real mission. Yeah. And it's just like, and people see that. I think that our followers, you know, see that I, you know, people who come to our groups and are saying that, you know, it's so calm here and everyone's so nice and no one gets mad when you ask a stupid question. You know, <laughs> obviously, you know, that is resonating with people. People want that. They want us to get along. They want us to collaborate. They want us to help them. And I think that, you know, you should go to the person that, you know, resonates most with you. So when someone recommends the Perfectly Rawesome blog, go for it because I would have recommended it too. I mean, and when someone recommends or I recommend Raw Feeding 101, yay, bully, that's great. I mean, I mean, it, oh, for us to do anything different would just be um, a, you know, huge, huge, you know, the opposite of benefit to our dogs. Yeah, and a huge disservice to all, all the other dogs. All the mm -hmm. other kitties, you know, I, I say dogs because I have dogs, yeah. I have that, but the kitties, all of them, the ferrets, everything. But I mean, I was having a conversation with Ronnie from Perfectly Awesome the other day, and it was that, you know, this is a two-year-old statistic now, so who knows what it is at this point. I hope it's higher, but with the whole 4% feeding fresh food, some kind of fresh food thing versus the 96%, that is a huge pool of people. Yes. Like, if you think, like, I don't know a whole lot of markets where you can look at it and say, well, 96% of the people that could possibly be a, there's 96% of the total population of these potential customers that are yours. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's totally bonkers to even look at it like it's competition. I mean, and to be honest, let's all get real. If it's really a competition, Rodney beat us a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we can stop now. Hundreds of thousands of people watching I mean, live streams. <laughs> I get like 20 people watching a live stream and I'm like, yes. <laughs> he had people listening to him do a live accidentally. <laughs> and they followed for over 20 minutes of him doing a live when his phone was in his pocket. I mean, I, went and did, I was going to do a live last night doing a, a review of a movie and one person tuned in. So it's like, <laughs> If you're, if we're really going to be honest, Rodney wins. Yeah. And then after Rodney, maybe Rodney and Karen win, but they got it. The rest of us are just getting the crumbs of what's left over so we can stop. <laughs> oh, yes. Or as some more negative people would say, we're just riding other people's coattails. Oh, yes. <laughs> you're, just, oh, so you're just a Rodney wannabe. <laughs> there's just so many people, there's so many people to help and isolating ourselves and pretending that we're in this big competition isn't serving us and it isn't serving other pet parents. I mean, you could be afraid of competition and be negative and look at them as the enemy, or you can reach out and help all the other pets that are out there. I mean, like if we would have looked at each other as competition instead of being friends and doing these types of things, we would have a lot less content we would have a lot less traffic to all of our stuff. We would have, you know, bluntly, we'd have less sales with everything and we wouldn't have this friendship developed and being able to show people that you can have opposing views and still get the, still get the job done. You know, same thing with Ronnie, same thing with the uh, uh, two crazy cat ladies. I mean, everything like you can either look at each other as competition and lose or you can see each other as people that are trying to get the same thing done at the end of the day and you know, connect, use yeah. each other's audience, provide more information to people and just do a better job really. Cause we're just not serving anybody by isolating ourselves and making competition out of nothing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So many people to help. <laughs> Well, I think that we should probably wrap up here before Zoom starts screaming at us because I'm really surprised that it hasn't already because I know that we've gone past an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any closing thoughts? I think um, my closing thought for 2018 is for everyone who wants to feed a raw diet, who's new to raw feeding, it's so important not to overthink everything. You will get there. It's not necessarily to get there on day one, day three, day five, day seven. You will get there. I started in April of 2013, but I was feeding pre-made raw. I started homemade DIY raw feeding in 2014. And you know, it still, I'm learning. It's 2017 and I learn 
the value of adding oysters to my dog's food and giving them whole raw instead of 100% ground. There are just so many things that you will learn and discover. Don't stress yourself out if you can't get it in day one. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to ride your coattails on that comment <laughs> and say that the best thing that you can do is ask questions and support people. Like there's so many ways to, so many ways to feed your pet between, you know, the crappy kibble to the best, most perfectest raw feeding diet. Like there's so many levels in between. There's so many things that you can do to improve or whatever step it is that you're in. So just be, my whole theme for 2018 just wants to be support each other and ask questions. Because yes. if we stop supporting each other and we stop asking questions, we're screwed. <laughs> Absolutely. Because someone else is going to feed us a lie and we're going to have to swallow it because we're not <laughs> asking the questions. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and close this out. Kimberly, where can people find you and your stuffs? You can find me at keepthetailwagging.com and I'm Keep the Tail Wagging on Facebook and my group is the Raw Feeders Kicked Out Club. Beautiful. And of course, you can find her awesome book, which I am now going to pull out to prove that I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that on Amazon. Do you have it in a uh, digital version now too, or is it still? I do. Okay. It's hardback and digital. Any plans for the audio book version? No. No? <laughs> I have been asked. It has been requested. It is not happening. I, w I would love to, but I literally have no more hours in the day. <laughs> well, well, I have a solution for you. We'll, we'll talk about that offline. But, All right. <laughs> uh, you can find me at dogdadofficial.com. There will be all kinds of links and stuffs in the description box down below. This will be on my YouTube channel, Dog Dad. It'll be on Kimberly's YouTube channel, Kimberly Gautier. So, yeah, have a great day, everybody. And Wolken says, huh, you want to say bye-bye? <laughs> Happy yeah, New Year. Have a good 2018.